glad I remembered that. Okay, so welcome everybody uh, to today's SYB webinar, Laptops Aren't for Laps and What You Should Do Instead. I appreciate you all taking the time out of your day to, uh, to come to and join us in, in this SYB webinar. Um, I'm going, the way this is going to work today, which is what we uh, started doing this year, and it seems to be working really well, is I am here live. Um, the main part of the presentation is, uh, is pre-recorded. And that is so that I can attend more effectively uh, to running the room and uh, to your chat. So you can, during the presentation, you can chat uh, at me, let me know if there, there's any technical problems or anything else like that. If you have any actual questions about the, the content, about, about laptops or EMF or anything like that, I'm gonna ask you to please put those in the Q&A pod, not into the chat pod. So that's a separate pod. And that's what I'll come to at the end uh, when it's time for Q&A. Um, so with that, uh, we will get started. Give me one second. That is. Okay. Welcome everyone to today's webinar. Laptops aren't for laps and what you should do instead. Briefly about myself, my name is R. Blank. I'm the CEO of SYB, as well as the host of the Healthier Tech podcast, formerly taught on the faculty of the engineering school at the University of Southern California, and before that, helped write the book Overpowered, along with my father, Dr. Martin Blank, about the science of EMF health effects. And this follows a 20-year career in software engineering. So I'm gonna start with something called TLDR. Now, if you don't know, TLDR stands for too long, didn't read. And so if you want to cut to the chase of this webinar, it is this. Do not use your laptop in your lap. Just don't. Now, if you want to understand why this is so important and why these specific changes in particular are so important, that's what we're going to talk about now. As we say in the name, SYB is all about helping you shield your body from EMF radiation. And when it comes to shielding your body from EMF, it's all about reducing your exposure. Now there are two ways to do that. The first is to minimize your use, and the second is to maximize the distance between your body and your tech when you do use it. And for either tactic to have maximal impact, you first need to be aware of the biggest sources of EMF in your life that you can control. And that's an important point, because we're all surrounded by EMF from more and more sources every day. Some of these are not in our control, or at least not in our immediate control, like cell towers, as you see in this photo. It's good to be aware of them, but we shouldn't stress about them too much on a day-to-day -day basis because there's not much we can do about them, at least in the short and immediate term. So instead, you wanna focus on the things that are under your control. And the good news is that how we manage the tech that's closest to us can matter the most in terms of our health. In other words, even though a lot of sources of EMF are out of our control, controlling the stuff that we can control can have a massive impact on our exposure. Minimizing your use of EMF technology is the absolute best way to protect yourself from EMF because then there's no exposure in the first place. And minimizing use means, just like it sounds, using your EMF emitting tech less. While minimizing use is the best protection against EMF, you can only do so much of it. And that's because we all use and rely on tech for almost everything, from doing our jobs, to staying in touch with friends and family, to entertainment. So you can reduce your usage, but to participate in modern society, you're going to have some exposure from your tech. It's unavoidable. And that's where maximizing distance comes in. And what I mean by maximizing distance is to create as much space between you and your EMF tech as possible. Why does this matter so much? Because the power of EMF diminishes exponentially with distance. Double the distance between you and the source of the EMF and you cut the power of your exposure by 75%. So each additional inch, even millimeter of distance that you put between yourself and your sources of EMF will have a big impact on your exposure. Literally 
every inch matters when it comes to your EMF exposure. Now, I spend a lot of time talking about cell phones because given the nature of the technology and how we use it, cell phones tend to be a massive source of people's EMF radiation. But there's another source that can be a big one in our lives too, and that is laptops, especially if you use them in your laps. Why is that? Well, first, laptops emit the same type of EMF radiation as cell phones. Radio frequency, or RF, is a type of EMF that comes from wireless communication. Any device that communicates wirelessly emits RF radiation. Our laptops are actually multiple sources of RF radiation, depending on what features are built into your laptop and which ones are enabled. The Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections are two very common sources of RF from your laptop. And some companies like Dell are releasing 5G laptops, which means they will have cell phone modems emitting 5G energy, which will emit even more RF on top of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Now, laptops can emit less RF radiation than a cell phone with an active cell connection, but this is not always true. It depends on the specific details of the laptop and the phone you are comparing and what you are doing with them. And to know, you really need to learn how to test. So for example, when you're streaming an HD movie on Netflix, your laptop emits a lot more RF radiation than when you're just checking email. So RF is one source. Next, we have ELF or extremely low frequency. ELF comes from your laptop's power source. It's emitted by any device that runs on power. The inner machinery of your laptop, like your computer processor, emits ELF simply by operating and your laptop emits a lot more ELF when it is plugged in, charging, and running off of AC power. So in general, laptops emit much more ELF than a cell phone. In addition, laptops emit heat, which is also a damaging force. Heat causes something called the thermal effect. See, everyone knows and recognizes that getting burned is bad for you. Not only does it hurt and take time to heal, but it actually kills your cells and damages your DNA. And you don't even need to get burned. This damage occurs when your body is heated, even if it doesn't burn you. So even if something doesn't emit enough heat to burn you, it can still do a lot of damage to your cells. And that damage can turn into disease like cancer. And because of all of the machinery inside, laptops emit much more heat than a cell phone. So when comparing laptops to cell phones in terms of their emissions, Laptops can emit either less or more RF than a cell phone. It depends on what each device is doing, but they almost always emit more ELF and much more heat. So laptops are a bigger source of harmful emissions than your phone. And this means that all of the studies linking cell phone radiation to negative health effects also apply to laptops. Both RF and ELF forms of EMF have been shown to cause numerous negative health effects and the World Health Organization lists both types as class 2B carcinogens. Excessive heat, like from the bottom of a laptop, is also a cause of this type of health damage. And as we just seen, laptops and cell phones emit the same harmful types of radiation. So if you are concerned about your cell phone's radiation emissions, you should definitely have the same concerns about your laptop. These negative health effects include immediate term conditions like fatigue and insomnia, as well as longer term and more significant health risks ranging from infertility to cancer. There are too many health risks linked to EMF to cover comprehensively here, but I do wanna cover some of them to give you an idea of the scope. As many of you probably know, and as I've talked and written a lot about, there are numerous studies linking cell phone use to the formation of various types of cancer from glioblastomas to thyroid, even colorectal cancer. When it comes to cancer and laptops specifically, the body of science is not yet substantial, but again, we can make some educated guesses. After all, your laptop emits the same type of radiation that cell phones do, so it makes sense that the health risks are similar. But again, it's not just the EMF, it's also the heat. Laptops can get hot, really, really hot. We have all felt it. And that heat is more than just uncomfortable, it's a real health risk. In fact, all EMF regulations and safety limits in the United States and much of the world are based around this thermal effect. 
In other words, wireless devices like cell phones and laptops are supposed to be regulated so they do not emit so much EMF that they heat your body. But that's pointless if just the heat source is heating your body. These safety limits, which are vastly inadequate, but at least they exist, they exist because everyone acknowledges that when human tissue is heated, DNA damage occurs. The type of damage that leads to cancer. So when your laptop gets too hot and it's right up against your body, that's a risk to your health. The health risk is undisputed. There is absolutely no debate whether this is a risk. It is. Next, we move on to fertility. And there is a large and continually growing body of science linking EMF exposure to male infertility and subfertility. At this point, this is really well established science. While there's a ton of this about cell phones, there's also a growing body of science about infertility and Wi Fi radiation in particular. In one 2012 study, researchers found that just four hours of exposure to Wi Fi radiation from a laptop led to decreased sperm motility which is a key indicator of sperm health, and a notable increase in the DNA fragmentation of sperm. Now, that's just after four hours. And of note, the researchers highlighted the fact that this damage occurred at non-thermal levels. That is, levels of EMF that were insufficient to actually heat your tissue. And so it was the EMF, not the heat, that caused this damage. A separate 2018 study from Japan also found that Wi-Fi radiation kills sperm. In this case, the researcher divided subjects into three groups. In one group, sperm was exposed to EMF from a pocket Wi-Fi router. In another group, sperm samples were exposed to EMF, but they had a protection shield. And the third group was a control group with none of this exposure. After just two hours, the group exposed to Wi-Fi radiation had half the quantity of viable sperm as the group with no exposure. And the effect got stronger over time, meaning the longer the subjects were exposed to the Wi-Fi radiation, the greater the damage to their sperm. Now, that's male fertility. Switching over to female fertility, right? Female reproductive cells, also known as eggs, are very different from male reproductive cells, which we've been addressing as sperm. One way in which they are different is that eggs are protected. They're more protected deep inside each woman's body. And the body provides natural shielding against EMF, whereas sperm resides outside the body in the testicles. This means that sperm is much more vulnerable to EMF radiation than are eggs. Now, Women's eggs may be more protected from radiation, but that doesn't mean cell phone radiation exposure is safe for women and their reproductive systems. In 2014, researchers in one study demonstrated that increased stress can lead to a significant decline in women's fertility and their ability to become pregnant. Women with the highest levels of alpha amylase, which is an indicator of stress, had a 29% reduced chance of conceiving. Another study from 2009 revealed that people living within 100 meters of a cell phone tower had notably higher levels of this alpha amylase in their bodies. And a 2017 study found that mobile phone exposure impairs fem the female reproductive system by increasing oxidative and nitrosative stress. So even though women's eggs are better protected than male sperm, there are clear indications that EMF exposure negatively harms female fertility and reproduction. But it's not just fertility. Another area of concern is pregnancy. There are many studies linking EMF exposure from cell phones to health outcomes of concern to pregnant women, namely miscarriage and birth defects. In one 2012 study, researchers found that pregnant women and their fetuses can be exposed to more EMF radiation from a laptop than from high voltage power lines. Right. Let me just repeat that. Researchers found that pregnant women and their fetuses can be exposed to more radiation from a laptop than from high voltage power lines. And these fields can induce currents three to four times higher than safety limits in the fetus and two to five times higher than safety limits for the pregnant mother. Another study published in 2017 found that women who had high levels of EMF exposure had a 2.72 greater risk of miscarriage. So now I, I talked about 
uh, miscarriage, and that is a horrible and traumatic outcome, but I had also uh, mentioned birth defects. And there is a large and growing body of research demonstrating that fetuses are quite vulnerable to damage from EMF exposure in utero. For instance, a 2008 study from UCLA found that prenatal EMF exposure doubled the incidence of behavioral problems by age seven. In 2012, the Bioinitiative report concluded that fetal and early childhood exposures to cell phone radiation and wireless technologies in general may be a risk factor for hyperactivity, learning disorders, and behavioral problems in school. And a 2011 study from Kaiser Permanente found that the more EMF a fetus was exposed to in utero, the greater the chance that the baby developed asthma by age 13. So there, as I say, a large and growing body of science demonstrating links between EMF exposure in utero and health defects, health effects emerging later in life. And finally, I want to touch on erectile dysfunction, commonly known as ED. And it's one of the most common sexual disorders that affects millions of men worldwide. A 2018 survey says that 5 to 10% of men under 40 have suffered from ED at least once in their lifetime. And experts predict that the number of men who have erectile dysfunction will reach 322 million by 2025. Now there is an increasing amount of data demonstrating that EMF plays a significant role in this number. Even though EMF may not directly lead to ED, it can create the health conditions that induce it. How? Well, Science has shown that EMF decreases your testosterone levels. EMF creates sleep disorders and sleep disruption. EMF builds mental stress and anxiety. EMF induces oxidative stress, and EMF interferes with your reproductive endocrine system. And all of these are contributing factors to erectile dysfunction. So I know I just covered a lot of different health effects. To recap, we discussed cancer, infertility, pregnancy, birth defects, and erectile dysfunction. These are just a handful of some of the concerning effects linked to laptop and Wi-Fi radiation exposure. As I mentioned, laptops emit the same type of EMF radiation as cell phones, and cell phone radiation has been shown to cause numerous negative health effects, many of which I write about on my website. So laptops present the same wide range of risks as cell phones. I just covered some of the big ones here, but for more on the science of the health effects of EMF, check out the URL on your screen, which is shieldyourbody.com slash EMF dash health dash effects. Now, remember, children are more vulnerable. I talk about this at greater length in other webinars and articles about the health risks for children and EMF. So if you are interested in learning more, I recommend you check that out on my website. That's shieldyourbody.com slash EMF dash children. But briefly, because of their size and physiology, EMF harms children more than adults. And because of their age, they have much longer to live with the impacts of these exposures. And because of the direction of society, unfortunately, these children will have greater exposures at every stage of their lives than we have had. I highlight this here because so many children use laptops for their education. And that's why it's even more important to protect children from these health risks because they are more vulnerable to damage. So what can you do to reduce the health risks from laptops? One thing is to use a wired connection. Wi-Fi is a big source of EMF emissions from your laptop. So when possible, use an ethernet connection for internet access. Even if your laptop doesn't have an ethernet port, you can buy an adapter like you see here in this photo so you can use ethernet in your USB port. And if you're interested in learning about how to use, uh, to swap out Wi-Fi for ethernet in your home, in your office, wherever you are, we actually have a course available on the SYB website that shows you all the options for how to hardwire your laptop, all your devices, and your entire home. It's the how to hardwire your internet course. Another thing you should do is disable the wireless connections when you are not using them. I have a bunch of healthy living tips on my website about airplane mode on phones. The same holds true for your laptop. 
So for example, if you're using an ethernet connection for your internet, disable your laptop's Wi-Fi to stop it from emitting Wi-Fi EMF. Or if you're just working locally on your computer and not using the internet, like if you're writing a paper or something, also make sure to turn off the Wi-Fi. No point in keeping it on when you're not using it. Similarly, if you're not using any Bluetooth devices, make sure the Bluetooth is disabled. Remember, your laptop will still emit ELF radiation even when the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are turned off, but these options are in your control and do make a difference. Use them to reduce your exposure. Another thing you can do is to make sure to unplug your laptop's power cord when you're working on it. Now, of course, this isn't always an option, depending on your battery. If your battery is low, you'll need to be plugged in. But if you have enough battery, then unplug your laptop. Your laptop will then emit much less ELF radiation. So those are the three actionable tips to make it safer to use your laptop. Use a wired connection, disable the wireless Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections, and unplug your power cord. And this brings me to the number one thing you can do to use your laptop more safely. Don't use it in your lap. What should you do instead? Put it on a desk or a table. This is the number one thing you can do to make it safer to use your laptop. And it makes a huge difference because as I said earlier in the webinar, when it comes to EMF, distance matters. Distance is your friend. Every inch matters. So just as you shouldn't use your cell phone against your head or carry it in your pocket or bra, the same applies for using laptops. The further away you can keep your laptop when in use, the better. And to help you get it even further away, you can use an external keyboard and mouse, both of which are available as wired options that plug into your USB-C or USB or USB-C. Now, to be clear, it's not just me that says not to use your laptop in your lap. And it's not just health experts, it's also companies like Dell, one of the largest laptop manufacturers in the world. Here is a direct quote from a Dell laptop manual. To avoid the possibility of exceeding the FCC radio frequency exposure limits, you should keep a distance of at least 20 centimeters between you or any other person in the vicinity and the antenna that is built into the laptop. Right? That is eight inches, almost eight inches. It's just shy. It's a big distance. And that is the distance that Dell is telling you to keep at least away uh, in order to stay under radiation regulations. So yeah, even manufacturers like Dell tell you not to use your laptop in your lap, even though they still literally call them laptops. It's in the manual. Now, there are some times when you need or want to use your laptop in your lap. For instance, if you're working on your laptop while you're traveling or commuting on the bus or subway, or if you prefer writing while curled up on your couch. In fact, that's even more common now as many more of us are working at home or on the road or seeking the nomad lifestyle. And we end up working in places that maybe aren't set up as workspaces like a sofa. And it's for situations like these that I make the SYB laptop pad. Now, to be clear, you should not use your laptop in your lap. That is what you uh, should avoid to, in order to have the, the least amount of this type of exposure. But for those occasions when you do use your laptop in your lap, my laptop pad makes it safer. Just place your laptop on top of the SYB laptop pad to deflect your laptop's EMF radiation and heat emissions away from your body and reproductive organs. The SYB laptop pad provides outstanding shielding. It's slim and portable. It slips right into your bag. It's easy to use at home or carry anywhere you go. It comes in three sizes to fit almost any laptop and tablet in the world. And like with all of my products, it comes with free shipping on orders over $100, a lifetime warranty, and 30-day returns. It's a risk-free decision. So if you or anyone in your family uses your laptop in your lap, or on your stomach, or anywhere in your body, you should get my SYB laptop pad. Okay, we're back. Now live. So, um, I'm going to uh, answer uh, questions. They've come into the Q&A pod. Thank you for that. If anyone else has questions, you can still type them in. Uh, but as, as promised, um, uh, I have an offer for, oh, wait, 
I am not sharing my screen, am I? Where did Zoom go? <laughs> Boy, you'd think I'd, I'd, I'd have a little more <laughs> experience with this by this point. Uh, as promised, uh, as with all my webinars, uh, I am offering a special discount to those of you who are attending live. So this, this discount uh, applies for you live in the room. It is valid through midnight tonight Pacific time. So we're talking about 10 hours and uh, that's 35% off the laptop pad. And to do that, just go to the URL on the screen here uh, and, and then enter pad now at checkout. And again, this discount uh, expires at midnight uh, Pacific time tonight. So if you're watching this as a replay, which I know a lot of you will be doing uh, tomorrow, that's Friday, um, this code will will not work. Now, I do. In, in addition to that uh, discount, I have another announcement for for those of you. As you may have noticed um, in some of the pictures that I just showed you, including this one, we now have a brand new version of the SYB laptop pad. If you go to our site, this is listed as second generation. It is sleek. It features elegant stitching to contrast against the, the uh, vegan leather. It is the second generation. And even best of all, it is, it is half the weight of the first generation pad. So how did we do that? Well, because the new version uses our laboratory tested safer body shielding material which weighs a lot less than the metallic alloy shielding we used in the first generation. And you can see the test results live uh, on the website, and you can see from those results, the shielding is just as effective uh, for both uh, radio frequency, that's the wireless radiation, uh, as well as low frequency, uh, which is like I was talking about in the video, the power line, uh, the stuff that comes from the, the power sources in your computer. So you can see these results for yourself at shieldyourbody.com slash test. So that's how we got the same powerful shielding with half the weight. And it also now matches our second generation uh, 5G phone shield as well, which you can you can see here uh, in this photograph. So uh, I'm going to get to Q&A. Uh, but uh, just one final reminder that uh, this 35% off for those of you who come to webinars or, or follow me, uh, the sales on the mailing list, you'll you'll know that 35% off is a is a big discount normally. In these webinars, we offer 20 or 25%. Um, but uh, today, um, uh, as part, uh, on top of our back to school sale, I'm offering 35% uh, off uh, for the SYB laptop ad. This applies both to first generation and second generation. So you can you can uh, have your, your pick. So with that, give me one second to put that back up here on the screen and we will get to some uh, Q and A. And oh, good. More questions have come in. Fantastic. So um, am I, am I, I just want to make, I'm, I am sharing screen. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to stop just to make sure and then share again. Oh, thank you, Michael. <laughs> um, there we go. Okay. Excellent. So uh, question. Uh, PC versus Macs versus build your own computers in terms of EMF, ELF, RF, um, uh, slash uh, question mark. Um, so uh, the, the ELF and the RF, the, so ELF is extremely low frequency. RF is radio frequency. The ELF comes from uh, the power supply. The RF comes from things like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Um, so those are the two types of EMF. And then, of course, you have heat. Uh, in terms of build your own, uh, and maybe, I mean, I used to be in, in computers. Um, I don't remember a lot of people building their own uh, laptops so much. Uh, when I, the people I knew who did that sort of thing uh, were building desktops. Um, but I get the, the broad strokes of the question, which is what are the differences be between these EMF and heat emissions between uh, different brands and versions of, of computers? And the answer that I have, and I know it's one that you're going to find uh, slightly disappointing, is I believe that what the, the big impact is what you do with the machine and how you use it. So if you're just doing email, for instance, as a, uh, you know, it'll be much lower emissions than if you're uh, doing video rendering or streaming it live out online or doing 
uh, gaming with a, a lot of data transfer. So that if you're working the processor hard, if you're uh, working the bandwidth uh, hard, uh, if you're using Wi-Fi or if you're using Ethernet, right? These are the things in terms of what you're doing on the machine that is going to have a much bigger impact on the emissions than uh, than the brand. Uh, similarly, if you're using the closer you're using it versus the further you're using it, that's going to have a, a big impact on your exposure more than the brand. So it's what you're doing on the machine and how you're using it that's going to make the biggest impact. I'm not aware of um, so, for instance, Consumer Reports does uh, high, highest EMF phones and lowest EMF phones, um, but I, my understanding is that's based on manufacturer representations rather than their own testing. And I just don't trust manufacturer representations about EMF emissions. So, and I haven't heard anyone in the EMF community recommending uh, different models of, of laptops over others. So again, I would say it's what you're doing on the machine uh, has a really big impact. And then how you're using it, which is the part you can actually control, has a really big impact. And that's where I'd focus my efforts. So thank you for that question. Someone comments, uh, not able to see everybody's chat, not feeling the normal community aspect. OK, well, uh, I don't know. Why that setting changed, um, uh, but I will look into it and make sure that the next webinar uh, uh, doesn't have that. So thank you for the feedback. Okay, there's a question about Tesla. I'm going to come back to that. I do want to answer it, um, but I want to get to some of the computer specific um, questions. So um, someone asked, I'm due for buying a new computer for my Euro travels. Need something with a keyboard and charger that will work while I go about the content, uh, continent there. Um, yeah, so again, this is a question about EMF healthier specific makes and models. Uh, I don't know that. And once again, I think it, it, it really comes down to how you're using it. So use it further away. Um, if you have to use it, for instance, on your lap, uh, unplug it if you can, Be, make sure it's not charging. Because when it's charging, you have just a lot more power running into into the device and 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 the elf emissions are usually much higher so i again I, you know if i if i knew which laptops uh were safer i i would certainly tell you i don't think anyone really knows that answer i certainly haven't heard uh of that um where in the laptop is the antenna that's a really good question I'm not sure if it depends. It probably depends on the model. In the computers that I've had, it's been in um, the monitor, actually. But the way you can tell about uh, how that is in your laptop would be to test. So getting a good quality meter um, and, and holding it to different parts of your laptop, making sure, for instance, that you know, try loading up Netflix or, or Hulu or something so you're streaming in a bunch of data, so you know that the Wi-Fi card is being active, and then uh, and then measure where the the, the emissions are, are highest. Um, I have for those of you here in uh, the room tonight. I have the. I'm going to put this into chat. So if you're watching this, uh, uh, so um, if you're watching the uh, this in the replay, go to shieldyourbody.com/test. If you're here in the room live, you can go to the link I just put into the chat and get um, the ebook, the free guide that I have here, which is how to test EMF for yourself. Uh, and it has step by steps and uh, meter rec specific meter recommendations too, and explanations of the different types and terms and units and so forth. Okay, thank you for that question. Uh, let, uh, will these recommendations work for tablets also? Yes. Um, I'm trying to think through what I uh, said, and so yeah, we have distance, not using them when they're charging, using airplane mode. Uh, external keyboards are also, uh, for most uh, types of tablets, they're an option. Um, so yeah, uh, and, and um, uh, the laptop pad actually comes in a tablet size. So even if you, you were looking for that type of protection on your tablet, uh, we, the laptop pad is available on that size as well, but uh, all of the other precautions I listed uh, still apply. Tablets tend to be a lot less hot um, than 
than laptops. So the heat risk is uh, commen uh, commensurately lower, um, but even so creating that distance will, will help um, with all of the, the emission exposures that you have. What kind of noise canceling headphones do you recommend? Um, oh, who, uh, so for hosting webinars um, or who travel on planes and stuff. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I, uh, I don't really worry too much about noise canceling headphones because I try to be in a really quiet place. Um, but uh, um, so little ones, I, I don't know. If, if you want to email customer support, um, and say that I, uh, I, I, I'd like to, I'd, uh, I'll put in some time to figure out, figure that out. Because when I travel, I, I don't have them next to me. They're in the other room. When I travel, I use my air tubes, my, um, my anti-radiation air tubes. So those are the little headsets that I use. And when I'm delivering webinars, usually I use uh, these big um, headphones, which are not really great for traveling. Um, but yeah, if you want to email hello at shieldyourbody.com and they can forward it to me and, uh, I'll look into to seeing what what good noise canceling options there are in the small size. I cover my devices with a piece of glass from an x-ray room window. Is that useful? Huh? I don't know. Um, I didn't even know that x-ray room windows were shielded. Um, uh, but um, I mean, it makes sense that they are. Uh, when I've uh, in, in fact, I just had to have x-rays done last week and the technician was in the room, but was behind like this cubby wall. Um, so they, uh, but um, if it if it is shielded, it might work or it might not because uh, x-rays are op, uh, op, a much higher frequency than any of the um, types of radiation we're talking about here. They're much higher energy. And uh, oftentimes the shielding will only work on a certain range of frequencies or, or work most effectively. Uh, plus you can um, find things that are a lot lighter. So if you just give me a second here, uh, this is something, it's not how we market it really, but it's how a lot of our customers use it, which is the poster frame liner. And you can get that in 18 by 24 or 24 by 36. And it can be folded, it can be crumpled, it's super lightweight, and this would work on the types of frequencies uh, that we're talking about here with laptops and, and so forth, if you wanted something like that. Uh, but I, I don't, I don't, I'd never even thought to uh, wonder if um, radiological uh, rooms have that type of shielding built into their glass. Does your fabric shield work if you put it in your lap while using your laptop? How about covering the front of you when watching television? So does your fabric shield work when you put it in your lap? Uh, I don't know which fabric, this because this question was posted before I showed the uh, poster frame liner. It, uh, I don't know exactly which fabric shield you're talking about, but it should work. Um, all of, because all of my shielding material is uh, based on the same technology. Uh, different products use different materials. Um, although more and more of them are using our safer body, which is in the second generation of the, the laptop pad that I was telling you about. And it's in the, the foam pouch, the pouch deluxe and so forth. So more and more of my products are using that, but then the poster frame liner is different and the boxer shorts are different and the baseball cap is different and so forth, but they all use the same basic technology, which is that the fabric is uh, woven with, um, whoa, sorry, I hit the mic with these uh, intersecting threads of conductive metal. And that's what forms the barrier, like a Faraday cage against the, the EMF radiation. So I, I do know that um, several of my cli uh, clients, customers use the baby blanket as a laptop, or sorry, as a lap protector. Uh, for instance, uh, pregnant women who are using their phone will put the ba uh, baby blanket over them. Um, so it should, I don't, again, I don't know which product you're asking about specifically, but it, it should work. Now, the second question, how about covering the front of you when watching television? Tell, um, televisions today are much, much lower rates, uh, radiation than when I was, I don't know your age, uh, but then when I was growing up, um, and it's because the display technology is so fundamentally different. Uh, now, they, they could have, as many of them now do, 
uh, Wi-Fi, um, all these smart TVs and, and so forth. And uh, so if that's the case, if it's a significant source of Wi-Fi, then um, yes, putting fabric on you while, while you're watching TV could, could reduce your exposure. Uh, my guess is that wouldn't be a particularly significant source of exposure. Um, but uh, again, this is where we're using a meter, learn, getting a decent meter and learning how to use it. That's where this uh, comes into play. And you can gauge, you know, because you could think the TV is a risk, um, but then it turns out uh, in the wall behind you, there's, there's just really poor wiring and that ends up being a bigger risk. And so then you'd adjust your, your mitigation strategy based on that information. So I would, I would definitely learn, get a decent meter, learn how to use it, take the measurements, figure out where you want to uh, be reducing your exposures, and then take that approach. Um, I have a laptop desk that is nine and a half inches tall, so it raises the laptop five and a half inches away from my lap. Um, I'm, I'm a little confused at those numbers, um, but anyway, let's just say it's uh, it raises five inches, five, five and a half inches away from your lap. Uh, that's great. I mean, the further, the better, um, but that is certainly better than having it right in your lap. Um, oh, I get why it's, it's nine and a half inches tall, but it's five and a half inches away from your lap because it's on like the bed and the legs are overlapping with your body. I think I understand. Uh, so yeah, every bit of distance that you can create will reduce your exposure, and it really makes a big difference. It's not a linear relationship; it's an exponential relationship. So five and a half inches is a lot better than on your body. But as you saw in the Dell manual, you know, for certain uh, models of laptop, they're they're recommending more than five and a half inches. But if you're doing the five and a half inches, that's that's way better than using it on your body. That was a good question. No one's ever asked me that before. Thank you. Um, how does the pad functionally protect from the various frequencies? Do whatever emissions coming from the laptop and accessories get absorbed by the pad, repelled outward or something else? Great question. Um, give me one second to find a particular post. Um, actually, wait, I think I know where it is. Uh, so I'm going to put this into the chat. This is an answer to the question I'm, I'm doing now, which is how EMF shielding works. So the answer, first off, is none of my products absorb. There are EMF, some EMF uh, absorption materials. And um, the, the way, well, actually, that I, I shouldn't say, none of my EMF shielding products absorb. Uh, the hard, um, which is this product, which um, removes uh, stray radiation from from headphones right so it's an it's an alternative to using air tube headphones uh what the way this works is the the stray radiation is flowing along the wire in here is a pack of dielectric gel which effectively absorbs that stray radiation and converts it into heat because that's how absorbers work they convert emf into heat and they're in general, when it comes to shield, shielding, because the, the, the hard that you see right here is not a shielding product, it's a headset filtration product. Um, but when it comes to shielding, absorption materials are just generally nowhere near as effective as shielding materials. And so the difference is a shielding material deflects. It bounces it back in the opposite direction. And of course, as it is going in that direction, it continues to diminish in power exponentially with distance. So all of my products uh, utilize shielding in terms of how they perform at different frequencies. Um, that is reflected in the test reports. So if you go, it's um, go to my site and you go to testing and laboratory test results. Um, and this page will load and uh, safer body is what's in the second generation. And if you go down uh, platinum steel is what's in the first generation and you by just clicking these links you can download the reports and you can see how how both of these options perform at the different frequencies and you can see they're not identical at all frequencies but it's very high shielding at, at all of the tested frequencies thank you for that question oh okay so the question is the bandana yes the bandana 
uh, and, and this is referring back to putting the fabric on your lap. Uh, yes, the bandana would would work. It wouldn't help absorb any of the heat uh, or create any of the distance to reduce the heat um, the way the laptop pad will, uh, just because of the materials are so. I mean, the bandana is it's a thin piece of silver and silk. Uh, but in terms of the 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 EMF frequencies, yes, uh, the bandana would uh, deflect um, those and uh, would generally be big enough uh, to cover your lap. So um, thank you. Uh, on the product link, while flipping through the pictures, it says triple blocking power, RLF, uh, RF, ELF, and heat, but no mention of EMF. Thank you for that feedback. Um, RF and ELF are forms of EMF. So um, um, give me a second. I want to see if I can find the illustration. And I, let me see if I have it. Um, shoot. Um, I'm, I'm looking for an image. Ah, here we go. Found one. Okay. So this is this is an image I, I made for my father's book, actually, uh, to, to, to illustrate the EMF spectrum. So everything that you're seeing here is EMF, uh, which means electromagnetic fields or electromagnetic radiation. In the middle is visible light. That's like what we get from the sun. And from there on down, we have these uh, forms that are called non ionizing. From there on up, we have ionizing, and that includes UV, uh, UV rays, X rays, and gamma rays. The, the information I provide and the products I make are all focused around non ionizing information, uh, radiation. Pardon me. So RF, uh, RF stands for radio frequency, it's also sometimes called microwave. And those are the types of EMF that are used for wireless communication. And then ELF stands for extremely low frequency, uh, which is uh, like power, power lines and appliances and, and, and things that run on power. So RF and ELF are the two main kinds of sources of human made EMF radiation uh, that we are concerned about and that uh, we are trying to mitigate and protect against. Uh, but I appreciate that feedback in terms of the way we present that information on the product page. And um, I, I will look into doing something about that. So thank you and for giving me the opportunity to explain that. Oh, and the second part of your question, which I just dismissed. So now I can't wait, hold on. Uh, do, so did the first generation protect against EMF, but this one protects against, no. So they're the same. They both protect against both ELF and RF. So first generation, second generation, the protection levels are almost identical. Uh, it'll differ a little bit based on frequencies, um, and the, the key difference is uh, is the the weight because we're using this this new material um, uh, in it. That again, that we we we've been using this material for years, just not in our laptop pads. We've uh, been using it for the foam pouches, the five G phone shields, uh, the pouch deluxe, the sling bag. Um, I, I know I'm, I'm forgetting one, uh, but <laughs> we've been using this material for a long time. Uh, it's just now we have it in our laptop pad. Well, the pad will protect radiation from going down. Wouldn't that just redirect and amplify going out to the sides? Um, well, I don't think it would amplify. So it would, so it does bounce that that's totally true. Um, and, uh, um, so, but it's keeping it away from the more sensitive bits of your body. That's why the best protection is keeping this stuff as far away from your body as possible. But if you're keeping it, um, uh, if you're keeping it um, on, you know, on uh, on your lap, then a, a better option is to use a shielding product like the laptop pad. Um, even though that would then lead to more radiation coming up. Of course, when it goes up, it then also diminishes in power exponentially with distance. Again, that's why keeping it on your lap is so so risky because when you're keeping it on your lap, there's absolutely no distance between the source of the EMF and your body. Um, if I put a big couch pillow on my lap, and my laptop on top of that without a pad. Wait, if I put a big, am I protecting myself? Um, 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if I put a big couch pillow on my lap and then my laptop on top of the pillow without a pad, am I protecting myself? The answer is yes, because you're creating more of that distance. Certainly you're protecting yourself from heat because laptops don't generally heat enough to heat at a distance. They're, they're heating the things that it's touching. So just by creating any of that distance right away, you're getting rid of the heat. And then depending on how big this pillow is, I mean, some of these pillows can get really big. Yes, you are. Uh, you are reducing, um, I, you say by 75%. That was an illustration. That's if you, oh, my airplane mode phone. If, if, if you double the distance, you're cutting it by 75%. Um, if, uh, if, if you're going from against your body to much further, like let's say, I don't know, six inches away, you're probably going to be cutting your exposure by more than 75%. Uh, but you still want to create as much distance as possible. And so that that is definitely preferable to using the, the device in your lap. Thank you. I usually prop my elbows within inches from the front edge of the laptop. Is that a problem? So it's not close to my lap, but close to elbows. Well, I would say, I mean, you know, the, you want to keep it as far away from any part of your body as possible, but elbows, obviously, I would say contain, uh, they don't contain vital organs. Um, and, and so an exposure to your elbow is exposure to your body, but by keeping it further, I, I mean, the, the stuff near your lap is, is really important. You know, depend, it doesn't matter what sex or gender or whatever you are, the stuff there is really important. And there's other stuff that's really important that's also close to there. So uh, I would say, in general, you don't need to be as worried about exposure to your elbows as you do to vital organs. Um, but that said, you still want to minimize your overall exposure as much as possible. And, and um, so, but, you know, it, it, there's a limit to how much you can worry about this stuff. So if you're keeping it as far away as is practical for you, then, then good and you can you know if you can do more then you should do more but if you can't then focus on other areas of remediation like not carrying your phone in your pocket um uh and also just to clarify that would be an example where my laptop had doesn't sound like it would it would really help because your elbows would be on the side and in, in front of the the laptop thank you Jill says, if your shielding devices reflect the waves, where is it deflected? So it would basically go up, right? Um, and so your hands would get more exposure um, than, than uh, they would without the laptop pad, but you're cutting the exposure to your lap significantly. And when it goes up, again, as it get, passes through the hands and goes further up, the, the, the exposure diminishes in power exponentially with distance. So by the time it gets like up to here, uh, it's way, way weaker than it would be directly under the, the laptop. Um, so that is, but ag again, this is why I say the best protection is to keep the thing as far away. So for instance, you know, uh, I think it, my cord's currently long enough. You know, I, I'm, I'm on a laptop right now and it's far away from me. And I have this wired keyboard in place. I have my wired trackball in place. And the, the laptop itself is, you know, feet away from me. Um, and I'm not using my laptop pad now. Uh, I use my laptop pad really for uh, travel. Um, so when I'm on airplanes, uh, when I have to sit and, and do work in a, in a bus or uh, an airport or a train station, um, and then also, like I said, you know, if I have to do work from an Airbnb or something and there's just no good setup, that's when uh, I use the laptop pad because in, in as much of my life as possible, I keep this stuff as far away from me as possible and then use wired peripherals. So I don't even, you know, I don't even have to be within uh, reach of, of the keyboard. Does earthing slash grounding the body help to reduce the effects? Uh, it can. Um, let me see if I can find, give me one second. We have a lot of information on grounding. Uh, it's, it's, uh, 
Um, what, you know what, because there, there's, there's a lot, and I don't want to just pick one of these articles uh, to share with you. So if you want to email text my customer support, hello at shieldyourbody.com with this question from the webinar, uh, it'll get forwarded to me and I can, I can kind of compile everything for you. And um, uh, but it, uh, or, so I'll just say briefly, earthing the body, grounding the body into the earth itself is a very healthy practice in terms of undoing um, any type of inflammatory damage, particularly, uh, particularly um, uh, the, the types of damage caused by EMF radiation. So if you can, for instance, walk barefoot in the backyard or on a beach or in a park or uh, anywhere, where, not pavement, right, but earth, and you can walk barefoot there, um it, that's generally healthy now you want to be generally as far away from civilization as possible when you do this not just for your mental state but because of the way that the grid is built and they discharge they, they send current back to the the power grid through the earth itself so it's possible that you live in an area with a lot of this type of ground current and then that that can that in those environments grounding is suboptimal this is why I was saying it's it's a little bit of a complicated thing. I don't generally recommend using grounding products um, because of other issues. Again, which I can explain in 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 uh, when I when I send you the follow up email. Uh, but because when you ground into the grid, there there are other issues that that can be present. Um, but I mean, it's a great question. I walk barefoot on the beach as much as possible. Um, so I don't, and, and I, I do, uh, there is real science supporting how, uh, how these types of activities can be very healthy for you. Um, should the laptop pad be larger than the size of the laptop or exactly the same size? Oh, right, so with all shielding, great question. With, and I do have an article about this. Give me one second. Uh, but the quick answer is with all shielding, and I'm oh, sorry, I'm putting the, the link into the chat. With all shielding, you will ideally want the shielding to be as large as possible, definitely larger than the source you're trying to shield. Um, so with the laptop pad, as an example, you'd want a laptop pad that's bigger than your laptop. Um, uh, and uh, the same is true. Uh, so if you follow this link here, you'll see information about, I, I believe it's the, the poster frame liner and the flex shield and its indications with, with diagrams about why it is you, you want uh, the shielding to be bigger than the source you're trying to, to shield. Um, so thank you for that question. Mm. Okay, in terms of laptop charger, I've heard the total battery charge time lowers the more you disconnect and reconnect a charger when it's at the zero to 20% charge left threshold over and over again. Um, so for that reason, I've left my charger in the laptop at my work desk and keeping 100% charge all the time. So that's interesting. I, that is outside of my area of expertise, but I do have some bits of knowledge on that, right? And, and a lot of this has to do with evolving battery technology, particularly lithium ion battery technology. Um, but it is my understanding that when you keep it, and it, it, it will, oh, speaking of which, my laptop is, is unplugged. Let me just make sure I have battery life. Um, yeah, I'm doing okay. So um, keeping it at 100% is actually, what I had heard is that is harmful to the battery life. Um, because it uh, actually, uh, it, just because of the way lithium ion, uh, lithium ion technology works. Um, so in fact, on my Mac, for instance, it has, and a lot of phones these days, uh, it has an option. So like on my Mac, I can tell it to stay at 80% charge all the time. So it's never hitting a hundred percent. And then I, if I, if I know I'm heading out and I want full charge, I can just click a button and say charge to full now, and then it'll go to 100% uh, before I go out on my, uh, you know, wherever I'm going. Um, so it's my understanding that keeping it 100% charge is actually what's uh, uh, damaging to the life of the battery. Um, uh, but again, 
I'm not an expert on that. That's just what I have read. And I, that's the basis behind uh, the feature in, in, in Mac OS that I was just telling you about. So thank you. Um, do I know if EMF can trigger seizures? I do not know if EM, that is not, I'm not saying they don't, um, that is not uh, a health effect that I've, I've read about. Um, is there anything I can place around the perimeter of the laptop pad to absorb the waves? Uh, better with a pad than not, but just trying to bring me EMF exposure as close to zero with Wi-Fi and while playing videos uh, that I need to do as part of my profession. So, I mean, yeah, you could, uh, if you if you don't have to plug in peripherals like, um, uh, like the wired keyboard or the power cord, you can, yeah, you could wrap something around, um, around your, your, your laptop. Uh, so for instance, you know, the baby blanket could, or some other type of product, you know, could, could serve that purpose. I mean, the, the, putting shielding in that position would, uh, channel more of the radiation up. And so, um, uh, yeah, the, the answer is yes. Differences between laptops versus desktop versus tablets in terms of EMF potential. Um, well, like I said earlier, I mean, a lot will depend on what you're doing with all of these devices. I'm sure it's possible to get a tablet to emit more radiation than a laptop, for example, depending on what you're doing on each device. Um, but in general, I would say tablets are lower uh, on, on the ELF uh, than either a laptop or a desktop. Um, uh, in terms of RF, it, it's really just totally going to depend, like if you're streaming video versus typing an email versus being in airplane mode, um, that's, the, that's what the difference is going to be on, on the RF side. On the ELF side, tablets are generally going to be lower. Uh, also on the heat side, I mean, I'm not, I don't use tablets that much, but when I've used them, they've never gotten nearly as hot as the computers that I've used. So I'd say that on the heat side, tablets are better. On the ELF side, tablets are better. And on the RF side, it totally depends on what you're doing. Does wired connections be improved with shielded wiring? Um, does the connection improve with shielded wiring? I do not believe that the connection improves with shielded wiring. Um, I do know that Kathy Cook covers this in her hardwire internet course. Um, so, um, and just to, I, cause I mentioned this during the presentation um, but just to show you all here how to hardwire your internet. Uh, so you go to courses and it's just there. And in this course, she talks about shielded wiring. Um, but I don't believe it actually has any impact on the, on the quality of the connection. Don't earthing mats slash grounding mats produce unhealthy EMF as well. Give me a second. Um, this is where I'm, I really should find this. I'm, I'm looking here for, give me one second and I will, I'm almost positive I can find this, uh, this link for you. Here we go, copy link address. I'm going to put this here in the chat. It is a YouTube video of a, a prior webinar archive of ours that I, I did with Andrew McAfee. And it uh, summarizes um, uh, potential risks of grounding into the grid, which is what you're doing when you're using a grounding product like a grounding mat or something like that, or even when you're grounding EMF protection, uh, like a, a painted wall or a canopy or something like that. Thank you. Is there a way to stop 5G from coming into the house through walls and windows? Um, I mean, she, there is shielding. You can get shielded film for your windows and you can get shielded paint for your walls. The thing is with 5G, a lot of it doesn't come through walls or even glass. A lot of it is deflected, um, which is, it, it's really an outdoor technology, at least in its current deployment. Um, but to, to answer your question, yes, you can, you can shield your windows. Uh, you could put, th th there's film that you can put onto your windows. Uh, there's uh, 
paint that you can paint your walls with. And if you don't want to put film on your windows, there's shielded curtains that you can put on your windows. And uh, so there are options for that. I strongly recommend that you work with an expert when you do that kind of implementation, because if you do it wrong, you can end up um, amplifying your exposures uh, based on, you know, if you have bigger sources in the house than outside of the house and you put up shielding, you're, you're actually block deflecting more back into the house. Uh, so, uh, but thank you. Is there a website for us to know how much ground current runs underneath our homes, uh, street village. That is a great question. I am not aware of one. Um, I am not aware of one. Uh, I, I'm aware of websites where you can see like what antenna coverage is, but that's for that's for wireless. Uh, I am not aware of websites that track ground current. That's a. Um, I, I, but thank you for asking. Um, will you be sending a recording via email to the attendees? Yes, you uh, 24 hours after the uh, so tomorrow you'll be getting the replay, assuming the replay doesn't fail, uh, the recording doesn't fail, you'll be getting the replay. Um, da -da -da -da. Good questions. You mentioned heat is the heat damaging. Can you briefly address this? What does it damage? Okay. Um, so heat, um, hmm. <laughs> that's, I often talk about this, but it's never a an, an, an direct answer to, to a question as, as direct as this. So EMF radiation uh, regulations, the regulations that exist around EMF are, um, like the cell phone is not supposed to emit enough radiation to heat your body. And the, 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 I mean, the regulations have a lot of problems, um, but, but at least, right, at least that level of protection is supposed to exist. And the reason that exists is because everyone recognizes, uh, even the most conservative wireless industry engineer recognizes that when you heat human tissue, you cause damage. That can cause DNA strand breaks. It can cause cellular apoptosis where the, um, the cell kills itself and these uh, types of damage uh, are what can lead to conditions like cancer. So these mechanisms are very clear, they're universally accepted, and uh, that's why um, EMF regulations that do exist even exist at all, is because they recognize that if there's enough EMF to heat the tissue, that's too much EMF. And so the same thing applies to, to the actual heating of human tissue. If, you're, if, if, if you get sunburned, um, you can have the same type of damage uh, because you have heated the tissue to where it's it's causing that that kind of damage. Um, so uh, I hope I was able to answer your question. Uh, but what it damages is the DNA and the cells uh, in whatever part of body part of the body the heating uh, occurs. If the connection wire runs next to me while I sleep, would it be better to have a shielded wire? Um, you know, it, it really depends on on uh, what the emissions are from that wire. So what I would recommend is getting a meter and seeing if there are even any detectable emissions coming off that wire. Well, wait, uh, when you say, let me be clear, when you say connection wire, I'm assuming you're talking about ethernet uh, rather than for instance, power cord. So if, if, again, if it's ethernet, I would get a meter and see if you can even detect any emissions. Uh, before investing in shielded wire, um, but that uh, that that so yeah, that's how I would approach that situation. In my earlier question, I asked for the top five or so attributes to look for when buying a laptop. What are the things to look for or to consider paying extra for? Uh, despite high use of computer will indirectly provide less EMF exposures. Um, I, that is, okay. So I understand the clarification. It is not something I've ever thought about, um, largely because I, um, I'm a Mac guy. And so every time I go out to buy a computer, I just pick which Mac I want. Um, the running temperature. Okay. So here's, I mean, again, it depends what you do, right? Cause like, 
a MacBook Air is going to run a lot cooler generally than a MacBook Pro. But if you're doing high level, you know, video editing, just to pick an example, the MacBook Air is end up going to end up running a lot hotter than the Mac doing the MacBook Pro doing the same thing, uh, because the MacBook Pro just has so much more power, and so it, it it can do that higher level stuff much more easily. So I guess what the answer to that question would be, um, what the running temperature of the machine is when doing the kinds of things that you would regularly be doing. Because the RF generally, I mean, it's not universal, but generally the RF emissions are gonna depend on what you're doing and they're not gonna differ that much between models. I mean, you definitely wanna make sure that you can disable Bluetooth when you're not using Bluetooth and you can disable Wi-Fi when you're not using Wi-Fi. Um, uh, but that's built into the operating system, both Windows and Mac and and Chrome, uh, Chrome OS. So, OK, so the other thing I would recommend is making sure you have enough peripheral uh, ports, USB or USB-C ports that you can uh, use wired options for everything that you need peripherals for. So like you can easily run enough connections so you can have the wired wired keyboard, the wired trackball, uh, the wired headset. Um, whatever it is you're doing. So those are two, I, I can't think of five, but those are two I would definitely think of is what would, what is the running temperature um, under normal, your normal usage conditions and get as many ports as you can so that you never have a problem using wired peripherals instead of wireless peripherals. I hope that at least gave you some, some guidance there. And uh, you know what, I will think about it. Um, but again, you know, for, 25 years have been using Macs. So I just never think to compare all these different models uh, from that perspective. And I, I don't think that, again, you know, going back to what I was saying earlier, not to your question, but to the question before yours from earlier, it's a lot more about what you do on the machine and how you use the machine than the machine itself. Um, Oh, and what laptop spec would we actively benefit avoiding? Well, uh, other than 5G laptops in general. Yeah, I mean, unless you need a cell phone modem in your laptop, definitely don't get one. But even if you have one, you can turn that off at the at the software level um, and, 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 and make sure it's not active. Uh, so um, th that just, so I, I just re repeat what I just uh, said. Um, Ha, huh. ha, huh. okay, this is a, a good question. Uh, I'm not sure I'm gonna have a fantastic answer for it, but for digital nomads traveling city to city, needing as stable a connection as possible on our laptop uh, tablet for online meetings all day, any EMF safe recommendations for someone considering buying a satellite broadband Starlink satellite connection so our connection stays strong? How to protect ourselves in addition to your pad below the device. Whew. Um, well, so below the device, I just want to make sure you're talking about below the laptop, right? Not below the Starlink. You don't want to put the laptop pad below the Starlink. Um, this is fortunately something I don't have to deal with, um, but I, I, I do see the benefits that something like Starlink brings. Um, and I say that as someone who used to live in a very rural area where the only option was satellite. And at the time, um, I don't know how many of you on, in this room have experience with satellite. The only option at the time was a company that still exists. It's called HughesNet. And I, I don't want to get into details other than to say it wasn't a fantastic experience. And I have never met anyone who's had a fantastic experience with HughesNet, both in terms of the performance of the platform, but also the limitations about where it could be deployed. And and so when, and when you live in a rural area, like a real, really rural area where you can't, I mean, even get dial up, even if dial up was an option um, and, and, you know, functioning online is such a critical part of modern life. So I do understand why Starlink is a compelling option, even as much as I really resent their reckless approach to sending the you know tens of thousands uh, soon to be hundreds of thousands of these um, satellites into low earth orbit but getting back to your question 
I would say keep the device, the system as far like the satellite dish as far away from you as possible. Um, when you do your setup, if you're talking about being a nomad, right, that's different from rural living. That's sometimes you'll be rural, you'll be moving around a lot. So when you set up where you're going, move the satellite dish as far away from you as possible. Then you don't just because you're using satellite doesn't mean you need to use Wi Fi. So uh, you can run a wired connection to all of your devices. Um, uh, so that would require bringing Ethernet cables with you as well as as the the Starlink setup. Um, but that is def that is I mean if you're concerned about EMF exposure that is what it, what I would strongly recommend. And then turn it off when you're not using it. Um, so just oh and by the way if you're running uh, wired Ethernet from this applies whether you're, you know you're at home or uh, I mean I'm talking to you but I'm also talking to everyone if if you're if you're getting if you're turning off Wi-Fi in your house, um, like if you're turning off the Wi-Fi router, if you're getting rid of Wi-Fi or if you're just turning it off at night, you also want to make sure to be turning the Wi-Fi off on all of your devices. So that means like your laptop, your smart TV, your cell phone, and so forth. And that is what's going to really get rid of all of it in 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 the house that you're staying in. I hope that was a satisfactory um, answer. Uh, why not put a laptop pad, pad below a Starlink? I guess, I mean, that would depend. I mean, if the Starlink thing were directly above your head, um, right? Because, I mean, it all depends on the position of, of, of what you're talking about. And I, I would need to, to, to know more um, about, about the, the details of, of, of the position of everything involved uh, in order to say that. But in general, you know, the laptop pad is meant for devices that you're using in your lap. Um, rather than like shielding against things that are further away from you. And it really depends on relative position and, and so forth. Uh, does using a wired mouse help as it keeps your fingers off the keyboard? Yeah, I mean, I, yes, that's what I was showing you. I, I use a wired trackball and a wired keyboard. Um, and uh, even though my, my, my MacBook has a perfectly functional keyboard, and a perfectly functional trackpad. I I only use it when I'm traveling, and instead I, I you know I'm I'm always using a wired keyboard and and mouse. Where would we look to purchase mobile hotspot devices and power banks for traveling? Um, I mean, I if if it were me, you know, I'd use Amazon. Um, I don't know if there's any better places for that sort of thing. I'm not aware of, you know, like EMF stores that sell low EMF power banks or anything like that. So I would just go to Amazon. Um, sometimes when I turn my Wi-Fi off at night, my PS4 malfunctions because they like to do system updates at night. Do you know how to remedy this? I don't know that in particular. I'd be, I mean, so I don't know what malfunctions means in this case or what is actually triggering it. Because if, if, if your, your Wi-Fi is off when it's trying to do it, then it shouldn't even start. And then I don't see how an error would happen. If you're turning off the Wi-Fi in the middle of an update, I could see that being an issue. Uh, so then just make sure that your PS4 is not in the middle of an update when you turn off your Wi-Fi. Um, but I, I, I don't have a PlayStation, so I, I, I don't have any um, basis of experience. I'm sorry to answer this question. Uh, I need to know more details, um, but I guess one thing, let me just, see. whoops, what did I do wrong? I did something. I hit the wrong key. Does a PS4 have ethernet? PS4 has ethernet. There you go. I did come up with an answer. Use ethernet. Um, just because you're turning off the Wi-Fi doesn't mean you have to turn off your internet. You can plug in with Ethernet, and it, I'm looking here, the PS4 does come with built-in Ethernet uh, port. So that would be a good way to address that. My children lose all their saved game info. Oh, I'm laughing, I shouldn't be. I can imagine how devastating that is. Uh, so yeah, Ethernet would be the way around that. And then when you turn off your Wi-Fi, make sure you're just turning off your Wi-Fi. You're not turning off your whole internet. Um, If we don't shut our computers down while on the go, is there a laptop case you recommend? 
Uh, no, I don't. Um, and I don't know. I didn't even. I, I didn't even think that you could use a laptop closed. And that's because I, I, I mean, I guess it makes sense. Um, but I've just never done that every time I, I have it set when I close my laptop, it, it goes to sleep. So I hadn't thought about that. Uh, so no, I'm not aware of uh, one. So I lay my palms on the laptop as I type. Is this an issue or do you have a product that would help my hands? So if you're worried about your hand exposure in that context, um, I don't have a product, but for instance, Les EMF does, uh, that is gloves um, that you can, you can uh, use uh, that would, would reduce the exposure to your hands um, on the keyboard. Whether or not you're using my laptop pad, the, the gloves would re re reduce your uh, EMF exposure to your hands. So you'd look, it's lessemf.com and just search their site uh, for gloves. Um, my Wi Fi router has a limited number of Ethernet ports. Any way around that? Yes. Uh, you buy a either, and, and Kathy covers this in the hardwire course. Um, but uh, the, the quick answer is you buy a hub or a switch, right? So um, you can just, you can go on Amazon, you go to the local, I don't, I don't remember what, like Circuit City or Best Buy or whatever, and, um, and get a, a, an ethernet hub or an ethernet switch. Uh, they come in different sizes. So you get like a four port hub or an eight port hub. You can go all the way up to a, a consumer stores. I think they might sell 24 port switches. And then you can just run one cable from your router to this hub or switch and then you can plug in as many of these devices as, as you need. Your hands get tingly, hence the question on protection for palms. So yeah, I would recommend uh, EMF gloves to see if that makes a difference. But you, I mean, I don't know if this is an option for you, but it definitely sounds like you should be using an external keyboard rather than, and keeping the laptop further, if you're experiencing physical sensations like that from EMF exposure, I would strongly recommend uh, adjusting your behavior, um, meaning your the way you're using the, the source um, before getting into protection. And so uh, if it's possible, and I don't know if it's possible because I don't know your life, um, but if it's possible, I would say keep that laptop away from you and put that money into a, an external keyboard rather than than um, using gloves, uh, but but if that's not possible, then definitely try the gloves. Um, which again, lessemf.com. Uh, okay, okay. Now, asked earlier, I said I would come back to it. How can I protect myself in a Tesla car um, by not using? <laughs> I'm sorry that that was flippant, but true, and that's not to single out Tesla. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things I don't like about Tesla, but this is something that's true with all vehicles. Um, so I have an article here on the website, and I am going to put this into chat. And um, uh, so this is a, a, a much more detailed article than I'm going to summarize here. Um, but cars are a significant source of EMF. They are essentially an unregulated source of EMF, meaning there is no regulation about how much EMF a car can emit. Um, and I've looked and I've asked a lot of people, and if anyone thinks I'm wrong, please prove it to me, because I would love to learn that there are actually regulations on this stuff. And cars are multiple sources of EMF, depending on the vehicle. I have a very low-tech car, like super low-tech car, um, it did have a Bluetooth radio and it was broken into and the radio was stolen and uh, we paid extra to re when we were replacing the radio, we had to pay extra to get a non Bluetooth radio to put in the car, uh, but we did and so now it doesn't even have Bluetooth, uh, but even that car, which is a, com uh, uh, a traditional combustion engine and doesn't have Bluetooth that is going to be a source of EMF just because of the way you know I mean these things have electricity they have batteries they're converting. 
um, power, you know, between gas and battery and so forth. So even that car is a source, but that's a really low tech car. As you, if you go eat back even uh, 15 years or t- at least 10 years, you're starting to get these features in cars like Bluetooth, but then Bluetooth wasn't enough, right? And to, to support the data communication requirements of all of these features like Android CarPlay and Apple CarPlay and all of these things. So they added Wi-Fi. Uh, Because I remember uh, just, it was last year, I I rented a car, I was traveling, I rented a car, and I figured, you know what, I want to see what the feature, because I told you I have a super low tech car, so I don't use any of these Bluetooth features, but I I was like, oh, let me see what it's like to navigate, you know, to use CarPlay for playing music or getting directions and so forth. And I, so I turned on Bluetooth, and the friggin' car managed to force turn on Wi-Fi on my phone because it said it needed that uh, in order to support the data transfer requirements of, of the stuff it was doing. I was like, I didn't ask for this. But then it's not just that, right? With the When it comes to Teslas, they have all sorts of, and it's not just Teslas, they have the most sophisticated in general, but it's not just Teslas. And they're using uh, LiDAR and other wireless emission technologies. Plus, Teslas don't just use Wi-Fi for in the car. They use uh, cell, uh, they use data transmission to get over the air updates to the software that runs the car. And so you're, you're starting to talk about a ton of these uh, individual sources all in one vehicle. Now, what can you do to protect yourself? Uh, there's really nothing. The only option is uh, EMF shielding apparel, uh, which SYB has some, other companies have some, um, and the, uh, there, there's like, I, I have a cap, I have men's underwear, I have a, a neck gaiter, other companies have t-shirts and hoodies and uh, ponchos and stuff like that. So there's all these kinds of options, but that's really all you can do. And this isn't just for cars, this is also out for environment. Like if you're walking down the street in a high enough area, the only thing you can do to protect yourself is apparel, uh, generally. And the problem there is, you know, unless you're going to wear literally a bodysuit, some part of you is going to be exposed, but you can protect areas that are of concern to you. So, for instance, if your thyroid is a particular concern to you, as it is for for some people, um, a scarf, an EMF scarf or an EMF neck gaiter, that would be a good option. Uh, or if um, the, the, the male gonads, reproductive organs are of particular concern to you, you know, the EMF underwear would be a really good option. And then you can do this picking and choosing of the the protection that you're using, but that's really it. So it's not like there's a product that you can put in the car to make it safer. And as it comes to these vehicles with a lot of them, you can't disable, like in some cars, you can disable Bluetooth, you can disable Wi-Fi, but when it comes to things like um, uh, these LiDAR and the uh, the distance sensors and the lane sensors, uh, and as you get into more and more self-driving technology, you're not able to disable those, and those all rely on wireless EMF emissions in order to function. Uh, so that is my answer, but I would also encourage you uh, to check that link that I just uh, put into uh, chat, um, which is an article that Kathy wrote about cars and EMF radiation. Um, uh, okay, so, uh, product info says the pouch, um, the pouch, uh, the pouch shields 95% of EMF. My tester says it only shielded 75%. Why the difference? So for that, I would encourage you to email my customer support. Uh, with the details of your test so for that i would need to know uh because i i'm happy to to step through that with you i but in order to do that i'd need to know like what meter you were using and and how you were testing what else was in the environment and so forth um still i would say 75 percent is 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 a pretty significant reduction also i don't say that my pouch shields 95 percent i it it, it, the way it works is it shields up to 99 percent um, but a lot depends on how you're using the devices. So, uh, but it, uh, I am happy to to actually step through your testing uh, because a lot of times uh, there are, there are other factors involved, and I'm happy to to work through that with you. So that's hello at shieldyourbody.com, and 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 uh, send in as much information about your test as possible. 
and we'll 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 work with you to address it. Thank you. Um, okay, seeing if there's any new. Oh, hold on. So AA asks, which cars do I recommend? You know, cars are really personal. I recommend as low tech a car as possible. I have, I have a, I don't want to say the specific model. I have a super low tech car. Like I was saying, I mean, it basically has an engine and a steering wheel. And uh, I, I, uh, we both just love this car. It is so much fun. Um, but uh um, in general, I say get the lowest tech car possible, um, but you know, increasingly that's hard. If you're buying new, there are base, almost no low tech options left. Uh, so then that means it, you know, getting the lowest tech version. So like for instance, self, I was mentioning self-driving technology, um, which obviously isn't full self-driving yet, but exists to varying degrees. That is going to add a fair amount. If the kind of car that you're buying does over the air software updates from the manufacturer, that's going to add. Make sure that it can uh, disable Wi-Fi and Bluetooth um, and that it actually works to disable it. It doesn't just sell you it's disabling them, that it actually disables them. So though, um, oh, 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 but from a top level, if you're concerned about your EMF emissions and that concern outweighs your concerns for the environment. Well, actually, that's not even a fair statement because there's there's a whole bunch of things around the production of lithium ion batteries. So I don't want to get into that politics. If you're just looking at this from the perspective of EMF emissions, uh, traditional combustion engines are the lowest, electric are higher, and then hybrid are actually the highest in general and absent other like if you have Wi-Fi in the car, that's going to add to it. But just from the perspective of the engine, it's combustion or the lowest, um, electric or second, and then hybrid uh, are the highest. And that's because hybrids need to have this inverter. Um, and inverters are really big sources of, of EMF emissions. So hybrids are actually just um, from the basis of the engine, hybrids are the highest levels of emissions. Um, and traditional combustion engines are the lowest. So I hope that was uh, responsive. And someone, uh, this isn't a question, but uh, looks like someone wants to share it. Um, this person, because she reacts to EMF exposures, she took an energy medicine class uh, pre presented by Dr. Melanie Smith online. She is totally informative and taught protocols to, uh, to mitigate exposure. She is a master teacher in Eden Energy Medicine but also has a degree in Chinese medicine. Okay, well, there you go. Um, I have no experience with this person, but uh, one of our uh, attendees tonight really speaks highly of it. Um, so I think I got everything and that was a good round. Whew, that was a good round of Q and A. So, oh, and I've been hiding this. So a reminder and oh, most of you stuck around for, for the full hour of Q and A. I really appreciate uh, I really appreciate you coming out today. I know it's it's kind of you know it's peak summer and uh, it's kind of kind of hard to, to to focus on things when you just want to be out um, relaxing or going to the beach or going to see Mission Impossible, uh, which I I hope to be doing this weekend. Um, so thank you for taking the time today to come out to this webinar. Thank you for sticking around for an hour of Q and A. It was a great Q and A. A reminder that this discount, this 35% discount on laptop pads is uh, through midnight tonight Pacific time. And uh, the code is pad now. And again, that's just for, it's through midnight tonight. So if you're waiting to get the replay, that it will not work. So the code is pad now, and you just go to shieldyourbody.com slash laptop pad, pick the kind you want and go for it. Uh, thank you once again, and have a wonderful rest of your day.